How's it going, guys? Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Phil Talk Sports. Today is Good Friday, April 10th. We are over three weeks, 26 days with no sports during this quarantine. Hope everybody's staying safe and at least somewhat entertained. On today's episode, we're going to break down the little bit of sports news, and, and we're starting to see the end, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel about possibly bringing some sports leagues back. Uh, Major League Baseball is one of them. Of course, we also talk about the one sporting event that did happen um, over the weekend, which was WrestleMania 36. Uh, about me and Kramer from the Jacks cast are on here today, and we just kind of break that down. We talk about the big news in Tampa Bay signing Tom Brady, um, the whole number situation with him and Chris Godwin for the number 12. And of course, the Bucks also got New Jersey, so it's been a, a big couple days for them. So we uh, talk about that a little bit, and a little bit about how in two weeks' time, the NFL draft is happening remotely using Zoom, which of course opens up a bunch of can of worms for what that could possibly be. So other than that, guys, we, uh, like everybody else, we're just trying to keep busy. Just wanted to talk some sports, the little bit that there is, so I hope you enjoy. All right, so it's, I think, day, like, 26 of quarantine, and I'm here with Kramer of the Jags cast, and I don't know about you, it's been pretty rough. How have you been holding up? Uh, for me, my job is um, one of the essential jobs, I, I guess, so nothing has changed for me because I, I work a lot, so it's I've noticed a difference, like, not being able to go to restaurants and bars and stuff like that sucks, but for the most part, my daily schedule hasn't changed much. Yeah, I've never done a podcast with an essential employee before, so this is a first. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very essential apparently. Yeah. I mean, aside from I'm working from home, so like my yeah. day, I still do the same stuff because I, yeah. I either go into work and sit at a computer and work, or I come in this room that we're in now, yeah. sit at my computer and do work. So it's it's not that big. I guess I don't I don't have to wear pants here. You know, yeah. they, they made it pretty clear at my job I have to wear pants it's, when I go over there. Yeah. So like that's that's maybe the main thing. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't go to my job without. Wearing pants. Well, because your job is just um, all around the, the yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, I'm in public all day. There you so, go. So, unfortunately, I can't do that. Luckily, the one thing we've had to like save our sanity is there's actually been some football news, and and yeah. it's funny that with nothing else going on, weirdly, and obviously we're a couple days late on this, but it's also the biggest story in football free agency in like a decade at least or may, maybe since like Peyton Manning went to Denver probably yeah so Tom Brady ended up which probably surprised 90 percent of people did not sign with New England again and is a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers which of course it's close to home neither of us being Bucks fans but knowing plenty of them yeah and the Bucks being two hours away west of us uh so obviously I assume you were in the camp that even with all the hoopla going on, you did not think he was going anywhere but New England. Oh, I thought 100% he was going back to the Patriots. I thought he was just trolling everybody like he normally does. Sure. So. Um, I remember, I don't know if it made a podcast or not, but I remember telling you, I'm like, if it was strictly football, Tampa made the most sense. Because it had the best offense that need, still needed a quarterback. But it's pretty For the most part, yeah. I mean, offensively, they, he has way more weapons than he did in New England. Mm hmm um, throwing into Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard at tight end. Yeah, no, he has a lot of uh, better receivers than he did when he was then uh, in New England. They could probably use a running back. I forget yeah. their name of the guy. They had some guy from USC. Not convinced that he's the guy. So like running back might be something that they target. Yeah, they definitely. They're gonna have to go. They 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 can pick up a running back. They're also they I think they also need some offensive line too because he's gonna be playing behind a worse line than he would. When probably he's in, probably ever has. Actually. Yeah, for the most probably yeah. Yeah, uh, and then when you get to defense, not great but not awful. Like like they have their yeah. good moments and stuff, but uh, yeah, definitely not what he was used to in New England. But no, you know nothing you know terrible. I guess. Yeah, um, he he is going to play for a decent coach. Bruce Arians is one of the better coaches in the NFL. Th that was another thing. I'm like he's obviously going to go somewhere that has an offense and has a coach that he at least respects. Like, yeah, like the talks of like. Tennessee, like, granted, they have Derrick Henry, and that was a really very real possibility there for, like, two weeks. Yeah. And then they re-signed Tannehill. Not sure if that was the – like, I get with what happened, you, you almost couldn't go any other way. So Like, he, he yeah. kind of earned himself into, like, a year or two of so, that team, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, you know, obviously they have uh, Mark Mike Vrabel – you know, former teammate of Brady's, that yeah. made sense from a coaching perspective. Yeah. But that didn't really seem like the offense that uh, 
no, that but, Brady would be great in. But but it was a very real possibility until that Tannehill deal rolled around. Yeah, and I mean Tennessee, they almost to me they they almost remind me of like where Jacksonville was two years ago, where when Bortles took the Jags to the AFC Championship game, and so I was like, okay, we got this far with him. Yeah, we kind of got to give him another shot. Got to reward him for sure. Yeah, um, but now with with Brady going to to uh, Tampa Bay. Um, I don't know. I I think it's. I'll be very interested to see how he does in a team not coached by Bill Belichick. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested too. And like the Bucks are always a team that I enjoy seeing do well. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I I'm like a card. If you ask anybody, I'm like a card carrying Brady hater. Yeah. So like, I don't. If he does well in Tampa, I over I'll be more happy than I would be. Uh, you know, because. C- Basically, everyone thinks one of these guys, Belichick, still in New England, yeah. with the you know their quarterback is now something called uh, Jason Stidham, I believe. Yeah. And then you got Brady in Tampa, and Brady, I would think, has the better chance of winning because that's what it comes down to. Nobody, nobody's gonna give a shit if other than the Bucks fans, if yeah. Brady goes ten and six and they win the wild card and then they like win wild card weekend and get knocked out. Yeah. That's not success to Brady. And no. Brady's only got, I don't care what anyone says, he's only got this contract for two years. Yeah. If if things go great, like Peyton Manning did in Denver, yeah. he, maybe he gets two more if he's still, but that's still maybe. wishful thinking. Yeah. Uh, so the way I look at it, Brady has the chance to win, because this is about winning the divorce, right? Winning yeah. the breakup. Who's going to do better now that they've split? Brady obviously has a better chance immediately, but Brady's only going to play quarterback for maybe three more years, whereas Belichick can coach for another twelve. Yeah, um, I think I see Brady making the Bucks a playoff contender. Yes, contender, not maybe not like one of the premier teams of the NFC. I could see them going ten and six, nine and seven, and and pushing them to a wild card spot. Where before with uh, Jameis Winston, the Bucks were what seven and nine last year. What was their record? Six and ten. Yeah, I believe I'll look it up, but I think it was seven and nine. Yeah, because Jameis Winston threw thirty touchdowns and thirty interceptions last year. We all know that. Yeah, Yeah. Brady, he may not throw thirty touchdowns, but he's not going to throw anywhere near the amount of interceptions. He protects the ball way better than Jameis Winston can ever dream of. Yeah, if he throws double digit interceptions, that's high for that's an awful year for him. For him, so yeah, Yeah. like let's say he goes. Seven and nine. You were right, by the yeah. way. All right. Um, let's say he throws twenty six touchdowns and like eight picks. Right. Yeah. That yeah. team's probably ten and six, eleven and five. But, yeah, definitely. So I think he 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 puts puts them as into a, a a playoff contender where they can get now. Now that they added another wild card team, right? Uh, definitely. Uh, now in, does that go into effect? I believe this it year? goes into effect this year. Because um, I. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that goes into effect immediately, and then next year, or the next football season in 2021, is when we get the 17 game schedule. Okay, you might be right. I, for yeah. some reason, I thought it was all in 2021. Yeah, but no, if, if there's an extra wild card team, they they're, they're, they're pr- pretty much yeah. guaranteed to get it at that point. No. I think immediately uh, the Patriots might suffer a little bit more. Yeah, but Belichick is a good enough coach and cheater that. In in time, he will get the Patriots good again. Maybe not like fourteen and two, like what they normally go. But they're also going to be a ten and six, eleven and five. five. Yeah, they'll definitely be in contention also. And and the AFC East is also bad enough. I mean, you know, Belichick doesn't need to do anything spectacular to win that division. Yeah, I mean, I think the Bills, at least for the next year, this coming year, yeah. the Bills don't win the division. They're just never winning it again. No. I'm convinced. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. It, honestly, the Brady thing here, obviously the uh, comparisons are going to be made of uh, when Peyton went to Denver, but I almost look at it more of when Brett Favre went to the Jets yeah. before the collapse because he was 9-3 and three, and then yeah. that the wheels just fell off, you know, yeah. or the wings, I guess, because of the Jets. But, um, yeah, so honestly that it makes me think more of that weird season. Um, you know, it can go either way. I can see yeah. them being nine and three, and then just a matter of how do they finish. You know, yeah, no, this is definitely more like the the Favre situation because Peyton Manning was younger when he went to the Broncos, so he had the possibility to play four years. Where you know Brady's already in his early forties, and 
he said he only wants to play till he's 45, so what, he's, what, 42 now? Well, yeah, the goal is to play till at least 45, 45. right? Yeah, so, so um, and a two-year contract makes sense, so I can yeah. see him playing this year next year unless he gets hurt, so. And What's funny is it. if he only plays those two years, he yeah. would be retiring at 44. Like, is he going to go out of his way to go play for the, I don't, you know, stinking most think, random team, the Detroit Lions for for a year maybe. just so he gets his 45, you know? Maybe. I mean, who knows? Maybe if, if uh, Garoppolo doesn't work out in San Francisco and he goes one year there, maybe. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. But, uh, so it will be interesting to see. Granted, yeah, uh, like where we live, the Bucks are on TV all the time. I'm definitely yeah. going to be more inclined to watch the Bucks, but yeah. I watch the Bucks anyway. I like Jameis yeah. Winston. I like a lot of that team. Uh, I, may, I might watch them a little more. It doesn't change a whole lot for me, but um, I'll be here. Here's the, I'm very interested to see how we here's we already know uh, Belichick can coach without Brady because he's done it multiple times with guys like Matt Castle and uh, Jacoby Brissett and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll be very interested to see how Brady does in not a Belichick system. I agree. I mean, we've wanted this for a long time to yeah. to, to just see. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know that I see, as as great as this. This would be my best case scenario for yeah. my you know, yeah, the way I am. But like, I don't really see a situation where both sides fail. I think one side is going to get some level of success. Well, I, like either Brady is going to like go to the playoffs multiple years with Tampa, or Belichick's going to. I I think. You know, obviously, it would take longer. Yeah, but I don't see a situation where the Bucks go nine and seven, and the Patriots go six and ten, and then Brady retires and Belichick retires, and it was like I don't think it's going to fizzle out on both ends. I think somebody's going to do something here. Yeah, no, someone's going to do something, but I think it's it's way more likely that that Brady could fail rather than Belichick. So I think the the it's a higher risk for Tom Brady than Bill Belichick uh, with Brady leaving the Patriots. Obviously, I mean, yeah, I think in the next two years. Brady has a better chance to succeed, yeah. but obviously, as I said earlier, Belichick has a bigger window yeah. to succeed. And the other thing, the Bucks don't also necessarily have the greatest track record of success recently. No. They haven't made the playoffs since 2007, which is the second longest streak in the NFL. Right. So, so. they have they have plenty to prove. Yeah. Good on them to go after this, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Because I could see them really not even thinking... Uh, that they had a chance, and you know it's funny that, that how, how Tennessee was a player in this. Yeah, and of there is going to be some comparisons to Peyton Manning. Remember when the Titans were a player for Peyton Manning? Because you know he went to college in Tennessee, Tennessee or whatever. Yeah. And it's just funny how they like they they're always in the mix mix of these like future Hall of Fame quarterbacks, which you would never think. Like, yeah. like they're this close to being the Arizona of the two thousands, where they got like Emmett Smith and stuff back a, in the day. Yeah. Um, which funny enough, Emmett Smith. I remember reading a story recently, actually. Emmett Smith wanted to go to Tampa because his yeah. free agency period was right after the Bucks won the Super Bowl. Yeah. But when he visited, he felt such like, you know, not cohesiveness in the in the organization that he yeah. he went to Arizona, which uh, I doubt theirs was any better. Yeah. But they at least had the facade of you know. Maybe yeah. Um, so it's not the only thing that's changed with the Bucks. Um, they had a new um, new jerseys come out, new yes. uniforms, which we're going to get to in just a second. Mm -hmm. Um. Part of jerseys, of course, is your number, and yeah. Tom Brady, in his professional career, has always had number 12, 12 Yes, which is, which is of course, worn by former Penn State Nittany Lion, Pro Bowl wide receiver Chris Godwin, Yeah, which he did, they, they both made it sound like it wasn't a big deal Yeah, who got what number mm -hmm. until it was a big deal, because I feel like Chris Godwin, I hope he got broken off behind, the, I don't need to know. Like if yeah. it, what he makes or whatever, because that, that happens all the time. Actually, like yeah. guys pay money or they buy him a car or they donate to their foundation. Yeah. Um, if Brady wanted to be the good guy, like just make it known that he bought him this or that or gave him this or that for the number. Like I'm a little peeved yeah. that like I know I get it. He's Tom Brady, but you're the new guy here. Yeah. Like do something to be like Brady has not. Uh, you know, with these uniforms coming out, he was not in the video, which, granted, they probably shot that a month ago, but they even posted something on Twitter yesterday of all the players, like, they FedEx them a jersey, Jesus, and it was yeah. this compilation of them opening, and it was like, oh, look yeah. how cool, Brady couldn't have been in that? I was surprised they didn't throw him in there, because yeah. if, if I'm Tampa, I'm throwing Brady into every single promotional ad I, I possibly have right now. Yeah, and, I don't know, he, it seems more... Like I said, after the shock of it being, you know, that it happened, yeah, 
as a Bucks, you know, supporter or, or just been watching this from the Bucks, I mean, like, can can this guy? He he has not tweeted a thing about it. He he tweeted he was going to be on Stern, which mm-hmm. I didn't watch that or listen to that. But yeah, um, yeah, it seems like he's like a mercenary. Like he's not even like a hired gun. Like he's not on the team. It's just the Bucks, and then they have Tom Brady. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe like they're it's, they're having a hard time like integrating him into stuff since like we're in the uh, lockdown. So who know? Maybe he hasn't even been to Tampa yet. Maybe he's still somewhere in Massachusetts. In That's his home. true. I mean, I know his family was in New, is in living in New York right now. I remember hearing that he was in Tampa, but if that was the case, like, can you tweet a picture of you in a Bucks hat, like something, yeah. like that's yeah. all, that's all I'm asking right yeah. now. Yeah, I don't know. He, I just think they should they should do something. He should have at least been in that video when they were handing out all the jerseys. Was, maybe, yeah. Like, he should have been at the very end. He should have been walking around the corner wearing it. And he's right. like, can't wait for something. Something, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, but speaking of those jerseys, I'm mm-hmm. sure you saw them by now, right? Yeah, I've seen them. What do you think? It is a massive improvement from what they had. I think mm-hmm. Tampa Bay, they had one of the worst uniforms in, in the NFL, in my yeah. opinion, since they, they had that new arena league from that they changed to in, like, what, 2014 or 2013, whenever it was. Right. Um, these are almost like a – it's, it's almost like they, they went back to the old style with, like, just an upgraded look, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, they haven't had those – I think they actually had the red pewter, whatever they are um, – the first year the NFL switched to Nike, yeah. so if you go, if you look around, you will find Nike versions of those, and you'll be able to point out the differences. Like yeah. the, that, two or three years they had Vincent Jackson, they yeah. still had these jerseys. Yeah. So there, there was a little bit of overlap there, but the home red and the away white are like damn near spitting image of what they used to be. Yes, and it's what they should be because yeah. those look good. And in the video, the third jersey because they're like running around, and the video was weird. Like, yeah, I, I just gotta say. Um, they're like running around in this abandoned warehouse. It looks like, mm-hmm. and so it makes the alternate one look black. And they've had those. They had them made before, and they never actually wore them. If we ever get Jeremy on here, our yeah. good friend that's a huge Bucks fan, he has a couple of them. But they made them, they advertised them, and they yeah. never actually wore them hmm. for whatever reason. I think, yeah. and and it makes sense because in Tampa, who wants to wear a black jersey at a one o'clock game? Yeah, no. You know? If they ever wear it, it would have to be a primetime game. Yeah, so night. you think it's the black jersey, and I did through the whole video. It wasn't until they posted pictures later that I realized it's, they call it pewter. It's essentially a shade of brown, brown Yeah. Um, same as the helmet, and it looks fine. I don't think yeah. they're going to wear that a whole lot. Like, if it's if it mixes you up, go for it. it. Yeah, it's just alternate uniform that they wear probably two or two, maybe three times a year. Yeah, so overall, you know, I, I think they hit it out of the park with those jerseys. Um, yes. And it was simple. They didn't, you know, they did, they fixed what was broken and went back to what wasn't. That's all they did. Yeah, no, I I, I like it a lot. They definitely they they did really good on uh, upgrading their uniforms. And I know there's some Bucks fans out there that wanted them to either because they didn't know they were literally just going to go back to an old design. They yeah. wanted them to incorporate the creamsicle color a little more, uh, but it's it's not the it's not the seventies anymore. No, like the, the creamsicle needs to stay in the seventies and eighties. So the. And if anyone's ever wondered, the reason teams don't just have a throwback jersey on standby, uniform, yeah. whole uniform, the NFL has this rule where each team can only have one helmet design. Yeah. And they're looking to change that in 2021 along with some other stuff. So in 2021, we might get those options to have. Because as an Eagles fan, they've wanted like Kelly Green, like the Randall Cunningham yeah. era jerseys, yeah. uh, you know, to get thrown out there. Um the Jags, obviously, they're the old school teal jerseys they've wanted to, to yeah. get, which they have made but haven't worn or whatever. Yeah. So the stuff like that isn't going to happen until at least twenty twenty one. But yeah, no, the Bucks. It would have been a terrible move to make your modern day creamsicles and just wear those. Yeah, it's weird though. You say that with that helmet rule, you can't have more than two helmet designs. Yeah. The Packers used to wear that ugly brown helmet with their old uniforms. So the way that works is they literally just cover them. They take the sticker off, and once you take the G off the side, it's just a yeah. yellow helmet. Mm-hmm. They brown them up, and then they go back to it. But that's another. Des- that's a different design from what they. No, so wear. it's different than say like with the Bucks one, they would have to have a whole another design, a whole another pirate, a whole another this. Uh-huh. There's nothing else. They literally they 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 strip things away and just paint it. Uh-huh. So it's it's the exact. Let's say like when the Eagles had the Kelly green that wasn't quite what it was supposed to be because yeah. they had to work around the helmet. Uh, okay. They just painted the helmet we already had a different color. Uh. So it's it's like some people have tried it. 
and pulled it off. Yeah. And uh, like the Dolphins, they can easily yeah. take the sticker off their white helmet and put the retro sticker on it, oh. and then wear whatever jersey they want. Okay. So it really, it's really just a matter of what your helmet looks like and stuff, I guess. Okay. Some you know, and some teams don't deem it very important to try to do it. Other teams, yeah. they like they want to do this more. Yeah. So it really comes out to them. But overall, I think we we agree the Bucks. Nine out of ten. Like they, not yeah. much more they could have done. But, yeah, I'm no. sure if I really thought about it, there's a couple things I would change. But overall, like great job. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And and you know, a perfect example of what a terrible jersey reveal is. You just got to go a little bit. What would it be north, north. northeast, right to Atlanta? The, yeah, because those new Falcons jerseys. Holy <laughs> shit, <laughs> those are awful. That is taking a good uh, set of uniforms and then just completely just shitting the bed. And here's my my issue with it: they have they unveiled four jerseys, so they have two alternates. Yeah. So they have it's this all white one with numbers that just throw ATL on the top. Looks awful. And the black ones are the same, just in black. Yeah. Which looks awful. Yep. The red one takes the cake because it's. Red and the last like maybe I don't know like where your ribs end and, yeah. it starts fading to black. Yeah, it, it, it looks, looks like one of those FUBU jerseys that kids would wear in middle school in like two thousand five. Yeah, it was it's ugly as can be. Yeah, and then be, to prove that they could do this right and yeah. chose not to, yeah. the fourth jersey is from like what I'd call the Deion Sanders era. Yeah, yeah. it's black. It's got the little falcons on the sleeves. sleeves yeah. And that's it. It's got the numbers. It's got. It doesn't say ATL on it. Like yeah. it's, it's you black know. and white pants. I, I think that's. Well, it had black pants, but you could wear it with white, white pants. pants yeah. Um, anyway, it looked good. It looked like what the Falcons should look like. Yeah. And and honestly, that's my favorite Falcon uniform. Oh no doubt. Is is that you know the the Deion Sanders era Falcons when it's just black and white? I think that looks so good. But yeah, like when they were in the Super Bowl the first time with uh, Den- when they lost to Denver. Denver right? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's it's funnier. It's it's one thing if you botch a jersey, a new yeah, jersey, because yeah. people have done it. Like mm-hmm. the Jags, Jags changed theirs. Uh, the ones like the Blake Bortles era ones yeah. I liked, yeah. but the like the Blaine, Blaine Gabbert era, era is, those is kind of ugly. Probably the ugliest I've yeah. seen in that time frame. Yeah, but they didn't keep them for very long. No. So it's one thing to botch it and admit it and move on. Yeah, but to make three shit jerseys and just to prove. That you know what you're doing, make one good, good one. one. Yeah, that's just annoying. Like if I'm a Falcon saying I'm open, yeah. great, I'll just go buy the Deion Sanders one. Yeah, and it's gonna, you know, you're just gonna have to get used to them looking like shit. You know, four fifths of the time. And, and here's the part that really sucks: is the Falcons had one of the better sets of uniforms in football. I thought. Yeah, I didn't like, mind with them. the red uh, uniforms they had, and some occasionally wearing the black or the white uniforms. They like, they looked they looked really good. I thought. Yeah. And they they were a team that did not need to change it up at all. They had not changed in 17 years, and that was what they kept going back to. But there's a reason for that. Like, yeah, because like look, there are people yeah. that think the Eagles need to shake it up. Yeah, I'm not in that camp. No, because there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, no, they look like a modern NFL team, and it looks good and professional. Yeah, what the Falcons did, they look like they they should go play for the AAF or something. Yeah, that's, or some that's arena true. team. Mm-hmm. Which it's funny you say arena because like. The Philadelphia Soul, God yeah. rest their soul, because the AAF went under. Yeah. Um, they used to have these jerseys. They only had them for a couple of years, but it said, like, PHL, which is apparently an abbreviation for Philadelphia that I've yeah. never seen. Um, and that's, when I looked at it, that's immediately what it reminded me of. Yeah. Um, so, no, they, they botched the hell out of this. Um, I hear the Browns are rebooting again. They're the other team that's supposed to unveil. Here's, they're, they're, they're never going to make these updated brown uniforms look good they just need to go back to what they normally wore pre what uh baker mayfield or what's the other guy Manziel. johnny Manziel era yeah like i mean you're never gonna make the the like like this is hard, weird to say with for a football team you're never gonna make their uniforms look pretty yeah. they need to just stick to what was they had which I was mean, a good classic look what they have and maybe i've just gotten used to it but what yeah. they have right now is for what what you're working with, you're working with brown and orange. Like, yeah. you're not a miracle worker. You're an NFL team. Yeah, the way it looks is fine. I think. Yeah, I don't know why they keep trying to change it. Yeah, they don't. They, there's a team that doesn't just keep what they have. And speaking of like, uh, and I've, we just given our opinion on these jerseys. I will hold back a little bit because sometimes they just hit different on the field. Like you can watch videos and yeah. see pictures. Like the when the Jets was this their second year with these or the first year. I think. First year, it's the first year with the new uniform. Yeah. So I did not like them at all when they came out, and I remember tweeting like opening day, the Jets were yeah. playing like the one o'clock. Yeah, and I just turned that game on, and I'm like, you know what? 
they look totally fine, like on bodies running around on a field. Feel, yeah. Like I still like the old ones better. better yeah. But um, I, I retracted a lot of my disdain for them once I saw yeah. them on the field. Feel, yeah. Like the Bucks, I know they're going to look good because I've seen those before. For, they're a yeah. skinny. I don't think the Falcons. I'm, I don't think I'm going to have that same issue with Atlanta, but they might look a little better than I think they're going to. I'd be surprised if they do. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just there, there are certain teams that should not mess with their uniforms. You know, the Eagles are one of them. I like, you know, everyone's like, oh, they haven't changed so long. Well, there's a reason they haven't changed, because they don't need to. Yeah, since 1996, and yeah. it's, well, I take that back. In 96, they got rid of the Kelly Green, and for about two or three years, you really got to look at them to tell. They had a slightly different variation, and yeah. then in, like, I think 99, yeah. they got the modern, and then they haven't even changed yeah. since. Like and the, they don't need to. And I and I stand by, we have, like, a top three helmet in the NFL, too. Yeah. You know, the, the Patriots are a team that doesn't need to change something up, because I know they've had their uniforms for a while. Yeah. The Broncos are another team. Like, certain teams just don't need to mess with stuff. Yeah. And to, to me, the Falcons were in that that, that category, but... Uh, like, if the Saints ever yeah. change their uniforms... I'd be okay with that. Really? Well, it's so iconic, though. It's almost never Saints. been anything else. No, they they have. I mean, they've updated their minor, helmet. G- helmet. Minor, yeah. yeah. But, like, no, like, they like they used to have stripes on the sleeves, and now they yeah. don't. Like, they've tweaked things. Yeah. But, like, yeah, certain teams are just so iconic, and, like, the pack, like the Packers are, should never change. Well, yeah, and I don't think they ever have. No, not really. Not, not since, like, what, 1960 or whenever. Cause whenever color they, TV They've only was worn, like, one throwback uniform. It was those ugly things that they probably wore in the 40s or 30s. Right, exactly. So, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. So one thing, the last podcast we did was me, you, and Andrew, and this was right when all this bullshit started with, you know, COVID-19 and everything. Yeah. And we had said, like, hopefully WrestleMania, through the either the stubbornness of Vince McMahon or just things being okay, that WrestleMania would be the first event, uh, yeah. you know, since we were half right. Because, granted, it was in front of no people, but WrestleMania yeah. did go on. Not only did it go on, they cut it into a two-night event, which, yeah. as a fan, I loved. Instead of trying to sit in front of the TV for seven hours, yeah. two nights, three hours a piece, yeah. like, I enjoyed that. Yeah, no. You watched day one with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some people over, which, yeah. you know. Don't you know? Don't repeat that. I guess because we're not supposed to do that right now. Uh-oh. But you know, it was less than ten. It was very. It was very much. I think it was with five, maybe. Yeah, total, it was, like I with think us, it was five included. of us. Yeah, yeah. We, you can't. We can't be in a group of more than ten. Right. So, and we spread out. You know, we got a very big living room. Yeah, we we had, we took out the tape measure and made sure there was six feet between all of us. Yeah. So, um, but what did you think of just the? We were not going to dive into it by match, but like, yeah. what did you think of the presentation with no well, fans? I know they're doing the best they can, and they're literally one of the only sporting events going on at all. Yeah. You know, the only one. AEW and WWE, and that's y- really it. Y- yeah. Um, I-, I think they, they, they did the best that they, they, they could. Now, granted, it it, it kind of felt like I was just watching, like, a regular wrestling show. Like, that a, like a Monday Night Raw. Yeah, that you've been watching, because, you know, I, every once in a while I'll, I'll catch, you know, bits and pieces of a you know, Monday Night Raw or AEW show. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of felt like that. It didn't feel like it was necessarily, you know, the grandest stage of them all, yeah, as they call it. Yeah, definitely feel like WrestleMania. But, um... You know, the, the crowd does make a difference. Yeah. Um, but, and you always knew that, but yeah. now you really see, see yeah. how much. Yeah, because this the, the it was supposed to be in the Raymond James Field yep. Stadium where the Bucks play, and you know, it's a football stadium versus, you know, this was like, what, a, a gym arena that they this were basically was, So in. it's the performance center where they train everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the matches were, were, were good. Yeah. Um, who was it? The The Brock Lesnar match was awful. Well, everything with Brock Lesnar was awful. Yeah. I mean, um, Drew McIntyre won, so I'm happy about that. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, the thing that got me, there was a couple of, like, the matches that were in, AE, honestly, AEW's done better yeah. empty arena shows in WWE right now, yeah. but if you just put them in a ring and let them go at it, you almost forget there's no people. Yeah. The, like, the one that really took me out of it, which sucks because these usually, are usually great, they had a ladder match. Yeah. And it's really hard to have a ladder match with no people. people yeah. Yeah, no, that was in, I, that, that was like the one match of, of day one that I missed. One thing I missed from WrestleMania was um, the, the the Battle Royal that they usually have. I was wondering if they were going to do that and there was no mention of it, which it yeah. makes sense, though, because they basically only brought in the people that physically were going to have a match. match yeah. Normally at WrestleMania, even if you're not booked, like you're there, you're hanging out, yeah, you might yeah. go be with friends, you know, f- fans or friends or whatever. Yeah. The only people in these, be- and they would like, if me and you had a match yeah. at one, we yeah. would do our match and then they would 
have the next two, three people like the, like drive in after the fact. They didn't even yeah. have everybody in the building at the same time. I, yeah. Like you did your match, you left. left you didn't, there was no hanging out. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But overall, hats off. They did something. They gave us a weekend's worth of entertainment. Yeah. So I appreciate that as a fan and just someone that wanted something to watch. Yeah. Uh, UFC, Dana White was talking about, you know, I'm going to go buy a private island and do my stuff there yeah. so that you, you can't stop me. They got shut down late last night by Disney. Wow. Because Disney owns ESPN and UFC airs on ESPN. So they basically said, you can go get your private island, but yeah. we're not going to air your stuff. Well, here, Here's what I'm confused about. Why yeah. can't UFC just have a match like what WWE and AEW has been doing? Just have the two guys in the ring. So the only match. reason WrestleMania was allowed to happen is the building they used is owned by the WWE. Uh, UFC doesn't have a performance center. They would have had to rent out... Like, they don't even have a gym that they I mean, use. maybe somewhere. I don't know that it's set up for a live broadcast, necessarily. I guess. I mean, um, it, I would think, I mean, UFC is, is just popular as ever. Agreed, so, I mean, yeah. And, like, we always talk about how crazy Vince McMahon is. Yeah. Dana White's not that far behind. Like, he's second. Yeah. But he's, you know, he's right there at second. Yeah. And, you know, how old is Dana? 30, late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s, maybe? Probably. He, when he gets to Vince's age, he will be just as crazy. crazy. No doubt in my mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, he was talking about buying a private island for these guys to have fights, which is the start of the Mortal Kombat movie, too, if oh, you've ever seen it. Yeah. So, you know, so they got shut down. Rise of right now... Like I said, AEW, WWE, they filmed a lot of stuff ahead of time. Yeah. So, like, I think till the end of May is already shot. Yeah. So, good, you know, good on them. So, they don't have to worry about that. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of, because uh, AEW, same thing. They were at Daly's place in Jacksonville, connected to Jaguar Stadium. Yeah. The police tried to shut them down, but they're like, hey, we own this building. Yeah. And they actually moved to one of the wrestlers owns a wrestling school in like Georgia somewhere. So the last couple episodes they've actually done it from there. Oh wow. Yeah, cuz again, it's owned by this person. Huh. So they you can't stop somebody from doing something on private property. Yeah. As long as you're abiding by, you know, the amount of people oh. and the, you know, yeah. whatever. Uh but it's funny, no. They were at Daly's place for so long that uh, fans tried to come to the tapings still. Oh, really? <laughs> and they had to, you know, cut the cops were brought in and everything. Yeah. So they went to this place that, again, it's in Georgia, but there's no, like, Daly's Place in Jacksonville. You can Google that and know where it is. Yeah. This undisclosed wrestling school without giving the name, good luck finding it. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's what they've been doing. That's what they did to do these other couple shows. So All right. Precautions yeah. were taken. Yeah. Which is crazy. Um, one thing I, I think... Uh, Getting back to WrestleMania for a second, yeah. I think one thing that that has changed something entirely is the Undertaker match that he yeah. had with AJ Styles. Yeah, I think the WWE could do something like that at like every major pay per view or something. I don't want them to overdo it. I know yeah. I do agree the the bo- Boneyard match with Undertaker AJ Styles. I thought it was great. Yeah, and I'm not even going to call it a match. No, whatever it was was cool. It was like a, a f- I mean, it was literally like they shot a movie. Basically. So I've actually done some research on it. It took them eight hours to do that, to really? shoot everything. Wow. And then who knows how long to edit. Hmm. Um, because someone actually got a couple shots of them like on set, if you will, of it. Y- yeah. But yeah, eight hours to wow. shoot a 20-minute 20 20 minute match, match, air quotes. Yeah. Um, so it's funny you bring that up, though. You only wa- you watched night one. Yeah. So you don't know that they did another one of those. They did? They did it with John Cena and The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Huh. So was that a specialty match? It was a Firefly Funhouse match. Okay. So basically, take the Boneyard match you yeah. watched, yeah. and rip like a really big line of coke, and that was this. <laughs> oh wow! Like when when we're done here, I might have to show this to you. Okay, because a Boneyard match is technically a buried alive match. That's essentially we've, we've all. We've seen was. all. We've seen those plenty of those in the past. Yeah. But now, but a Firefly Fly Funhouse, Funhouse yeah. match is that like? A boiler room brawl? What? I don't know that the English language has the words created to what this is. <laughs> yeah, and, you'll definitely uh, have to show me. And and even better, uh, Jim Cornette has reviewed it. So. Oh wow! <laughs> and I'm definitely have to check that out. Yeah. So crazy stuff. Again, yeah. Are they on something with these kind of you know mini movies? Yeah. It started with Matt Hardy and the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. He's done yeah. a few of these. 
Mm-hmm. They did one where the New Day fought the Wyatt family in the Wyatt compound. So, like, they're not totally strangers to this, but this is the yeah. first time that they put, like, to trust The Undertaker and AJ Styles in one of these. He's, yeah. It's one thing to do it, but it's another to make it the main event. Yeah. But but it was also great because you could never do, you could never main event WrestleMania or one night of WrestleMania with this yeah. when you have people. Because people yeah. are not going to pay $300 to sit in, in, a, a in a stadium and stare at a jumbotron trying, for this movie. Yeah. So if you were ever going to do this, now was the time. time yeah. So, good on that. But so they're the only you know wrestling is the only people that are you know still going. Yeah. Uh, right now, the the people that are trying to revitalize the soon NBA seems pretty content. Not doing a whole lot yet. I mean, they're tr- no. they're trying. Like you hear Adam Silver, he tried to give it a date that got shot down or whatever. Yeah. But the people that are moving in, uh, you know trying to put light at the end of the tunnel is major league baseball. Yeah. And I'm sure you've heard some of this. Yeah. Uh, the, I think the, the, the big thing right now is they want to, I think at the end of this month or something, come back and have every team basically play in Arizona. Uh, I don't know how much of this you've looked yeah. into. So I, I'll, I'll give you the bullet points. Bit. Just right. so whatever you have. So, cause the, you would need, you know, there's 30 teams, so you would need 15 stadiums, right? Yeah. You know, granted, not everybody's going to play every day. Yeah. But they have, you know, between the Diamondbacks, all the spring training facilities, and, like, the major colleges there, they have, like, they have just about 13 to 15 stadiums. Yeah. So they have the amount of play. There's already going to be no fans, so the size of the stadium doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, they want to put them all there. They're going to put teams up in hotels that are empty right now anyway, so if okay. anything, it's boosting that economy a little bit. Yeah. I've even heard that it, they might even split it, because much like Arizona, Florida has the spring training mm-hmm. stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um, might split the league down the middle, mm-hmm. uh, you know, have a... Which, part of that would involve changing up the divisions a little bit. I don't know if you've seen that picture. I, I did, actually, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. I'm hearing more about everybody in Arizona, but I've also heard whispers of, you know, the American League in Arizona and the National, you know, I don't know which one, but yeah. or these new versions of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, do you think this has any chance of happening? I would be very surprised, honestly. Um now, granted, I mean, if, if they can get to the point where they can play games, where they play doesn't matter as long as they're being played. Yeah, if they're going to be in front of no but, people, they could play a whistle stop up the road here. Really. Yeah, like, it I wouldn't still, it's it's still strange to me that I, I don't see how they can get these sporting events going, especially since they're so, you know, public. You know, WWE can do what they want because Mr. Command is crazy and doesn't give two shits what anyone thinks of it. And you only need one location. Yeah. So. But this, with a uh, in hosting an entire sporting league and one as big as Major League Baseball, I, I find it very tough to see them pulling this off with this concept. I do applaud because like baseball is a lot of things, but like forward thinking is not usually one of them. Yeah, I would have thought the NBA would be the one trying to make this happen. Yeah, but this is a very you know liberal as opposed to conservative i I don't mean that politically but just like yeah. it's a very forward-thinking way to we, yeah try to go about it no it's def- it's creative that's for sure which is not something ba- that's not baseball strong suit historically. no but recently baseball has not come up with the uh best ideas right with that new playoff format that they uh that they proposed uh two, a couple months back but one of the best things that might come out of it if they do this mm-hmm. they're gonna have the electronic strike zone yeah. And have an umpire basically like in a booth, yeah, like reviewing everything. I would be much more. I would be much more okay with that. So, so if this happens, let's say it happens for a month, yeah, and they see that that system works, that yeah. could be the future of baseball, right there. No, no, very well, and I would. I'd be very open to it because umpires in baseball suck. All of them suck. A lot of them. I mean, there's a handful of that of them that are okay. It's like. The, the umpires, and like this goes for football too, the referees who you don't know their names, they're the good ones, essentially. But. Yeah, because like, the only ones, that, referees that you know that are good, like I've all, like an Ed Hockley that recently retired. Yeah. Um, you know, you only know their name because they've been doing it for so long. Yeah. So it's, you know. Yeah, but if, if you usually, like, there's no reason at all anyone, like Angel Hernandez, should ever umpire another game in baseball again. He is the worst of the worst in Major League Baseball. Angel Hernandez, Joe Buck's another one. He's just famous because he's a total dick mm-hmm. to everybody. Um, yeah, baseball does not need umpires. Like the only umpires you need are the guys who who stand at like first, second, third base to like 
call someone safe or out like you right don't there need, on you the don't spot. need it behind the plate is yeah you saying. don't know yeah there does not need to be a guy behind the plate unless yeah. like he's calling up making a call at the plate of someone being safe or or out if someone's trying to score sure no one we don't need umpires to call balls and strikes anymore no especially true. with the um you know the the technology of the electronic strike zone yes yeah, electronic strike zone so yeah because the days of um you know certain strike zones are over where a pitcher could be throwing a pitch, and if he throws it a little on the outside, and the umpire calls out a strike, and all game that's a strike, then that's fair game. You know, the outside pitch is going to be a strike, and right. the inside pitch is going to be a ball. Mm-hmm. The days of that are over because umpires are so inconsistent with their strike zones these days that the, that doesn't matter anymore. And like back then, yeah, it's like yeah, that call could be wrong, but with this technology, we see just how wrong that call oh, is. Yeah, which is the difference. Yeah. Um. So the other people that are attempting to move along. Um, business as usual, and I'm very happy about this. The owners were trying to, uh, the NFL were trying to get the draft pushed back, mm-hmm. pushed back because there was yeah. no combine, and they yeah. they said that they didn't have enough time to look up. I guess four years of college film was not enough to evaluate people. Yeah. Goodell, I'm not usually a fan of his, basically said, "Do your job well enough, and it won't be an issue." The yeah. whole draft is going to be done remotely using Zoom, which I find hilarious because yeah. everyone that does work, like I'm recently, like today. At work, I was setting up Zoom for a meeting we have to do next week. Yeah. So it's very funny, like, that that's what they're going to be using. And I assume it's going to go off, you know, people are like, oh, what if somebody loses connection when they got to make a pick? It's like, there's going to be some leeway. The other thing, it's going to be fine. They can, set, they can set up everything with phone lines. Yeah. Not, the, everything, not everything's running off wireless Wi-Fi. You're, yeah. you're going to have, you know physical phone line connections to your internet mm-hmm. so it's, I, I don't see how this is an issue plus you don't think that they were using wi-fi and, and making phone calls and stuff at the actual draft without you know yeah exactly being connected to stuff so i mean yeah some of the hoopla of the event is obviously not going to be there which yeah. it's not the end of the world i'm sure as we watch it we'll miss it a little bit like yeah. we're we're football nerds enough that we're not going to give a shit yeah but like Granted, we got spoiled the past couple of years. The yeah. Nashville one last year, that was probably the greatest spectacle draft ever, even yeah. if the draft itself wasn't great. Yeah. Philadelphia was good. Dallas was good. I think they've only done one or two others out of New York so far. I was even like, well, there was one, like, one in Chicago, yeah, I think. Yeah, Chicago was great. I think that was yeah. the first one, actually. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like we've gotten a little spoiled of it now. Yeah. But, like, man. All it is is just a big boat and pony show for the fans. Yeah, and it literally, it's funny you say that, because this year they were supposed to get on boats and be floated over to the... Oh. This, I forget where it was going to be. The, it was, was it uh, Vegas? Yeah, it was in Vegas at, at this casino called the Bellagio. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, was, they were literally going to put him in these little ferry boats was, and have them. So it's, it's funny it's, you would say it that uh, way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so granted, I hope maybe next year they get to do that because that looked, that looked cool. cool yeah. Um, but I'm not going to care. I think go all the way back yeah. and give everyone, like, the Batman phones, oh, you yeah. know, on the little table with your helmets. You know, the phone looks like your helmet. Uh, oh, and yeah. just go all the way back uh, yeah. and just do it off the off those phones. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the last podcast we did, it, you know, we were, we were pretty uh, down in the dumps because everything, had, like, it was like a haymaker. Like, in two days, everything you cared about to watch was gone. Yeah. Uh, you know, things are, I don't know if they're better, but they seem a little better. Like, people are, they're at least trying to figure out their plan for after, where before it was just like, what are we going to do? Yeah, no, I think now that we've gone through this for, like, what, about almost over three weeks now. Twenty six days without sports. No count. No, I'm not counting or anything. But yeah, you know. um, I, I guess people have a, a, adapted. Mm-hmm. T- to me, not being able to go to a restaurant really sucks. Yeah, like just not being able to just like go out and and not necessarily interact with people. But I, I do miss being able to go to a restaurant. Yeah, and even if you don't want to, it's just it's weird not having the option. Yeah, like I, like I eat out plenty, not a whole bunch, but it's like yeah. to not have that option is, is weird. You know? Yeah, like like during the week, I, I don't really care, but like on the weekend when you want to go out and do something, yeah. it's you're not being able to do that. It sucks. But I mean, you can only drink at home so much, I guess. Yeah. But you know. Mm. All right, man. Well, this has been fun. We got about uh, two weeks. So you have to draft? Yeah. All right, man. All right. See you then. See you later. Scream that jet off to Orion. His drone blood skin. And the hills sing prayers of America. It's hard times. We're in. It's hard times. It's hard times. It's hard times It's hard times